Good day. Uh, welcome to Module 2. Uh, today we will be discussing the uh, cash and cash equivalents as part of the Intermediate Accounting 1. So by this time, dapat ay tapos ka na sa Module 1 at Assignment 1 which are the CLSU, Philosophy, and the MGOs. So let's go. So this course covers the detailed discussion, appreciation, and application of the PFRS on the assets whether it is financial or non-financial in nature for a business enterprise. So, Intermediate Accounting 1 focuses on the assets. So, iisa-isahin natin yung uh, laman ng financial statement. So, unahin itong assets under Intermediate Accounting 1. So, at the end of the module, we will be able to understand the concept of cash the concept of cash equivalents, the items considered as cash, items considered as cash equivalents, and uh, the petty cash fund. So let's go with cash. Um, before you are uh, in college, uh, kapag sinabing cash, you know that uh, it is simply defined as the money, yung perang hawak mo na pambili, uh, pambili or pang-effect ng mga business transactions. But uh, when you enter the accountancy profession, it is clear to you that cash is, is not just the money that uh, you use to uh, make or effect business transactions. So this money comprises of money and any other negotiable instrument that is payable in money, acceptable by the bank for deposit and for immediate encashment. So, the key term here is immediate encashment. So, dapat liquid itong mga negotiable instrument na to before it is, it can be classified as a uh, under the cash and cash equivalent item in the financial statement. Ano yun? Mga checks, bank drafts, and money orders. Yung checks, it is familiar to you because uh, you already have encountered of this term. Yung bank drafts and money orders, uh, siguro we will be discussing this uh, in detail in the succeeding uh, modules. So according to Philippine Accountant Accounting Standards Number 1, Presentation of Financial Statements, um, the entity shall classify an asset as current if it is a cash or cash equivalent. So in-identify na kaagad doon na kapag cash or cash equivalent, it is a current asset unless it is restricted to settle a liability for more than 12 months after the end of the reporting period. So, dapat less than 12 months to be considered uh, less, than 12, uh, less than or equal to 12 months to be considered as a current asset. So, yung cash or cash equivalent, uh, dapat uh, walang restriction doon sa kanyang sa mga items ng cash or cash equivalent. So it means for that for an item to be classified as a cash or uh, classified as cash, it must be restrict unrestricted in use or it must be readily available in paying short term obligation. So ang key term uh, when you are uh, think, uh, when you are identifying whether it can be classified as cash is that it must be unrestricted in use. So, dapat walang restriction, walang condition before it can classify or end. It must be readily available to pay short-term obligations. So, later on, we will discuss how do you uh, determine whether it is a short-term obligation or whether, uh, and whether it is a short-term obligation or not. So, Para mas maintindihan mo itong cash, uh, yung cash and cash equivalents, let's dissect cash and cash equivalent. So, dun muna tayo sa mga cash items na nakasama sa uh, term na cash. So, cash on hand. Ito yung alam na alam mo na. Ito yung hawak mong currency and coins. Ito yung uh, pera na nandoon sa business. Hawak, uh, uh, whether it is in, in, in the form of a bill or a coin. Uh, yun ay classified as cash on hand. So, ang definition niya is undeposited cash collections of an entity and other cash items awaiting deposit. So, for example, you set aside a, an amount of uh, currency or bills na i-deposit mo na uh, later. As long as it is in your control at hindi pa yan na-deposit, it is classified as a cash on hand. Cash in bank, it includes demand deposits, checking account, or saving account, which are unrestricted in use. So, ang terminology, ang key term pa rin natin ay unrestricted in use. Uh, 
ang problem with uh, i- with the cash in bank, diba, uh, minsan yung mga bank account ay mayroong mga maintaining balances. The question is, ito bang mga maintaining balance na to ay restricted ba ito? Itong maintaining balance ba na ito ay makaka-apekto para i-classify ko yung item as, as cash or not? So, later we will discuss yung compensating balance or the maintaining balance of an account. Cash fund, this pertains to cash set aside for current purposes. So, for example, uh, merong pera sa iyong, uh, sa iyong business, pero uh, sineset aside ito for a, for example, bibili ka, ma, ma, mag, mag-set aside ka ng fund para ma-replenish ang iyong inventory. Uh, yun ba ay for current purposes? Yes, because uh, normally, i-replenish mo lang naman yung inventory mo. So, pambili yun. So, sineset aside yon as uh, sineset aside yon for current purposes. Yung petty cash fund, for example, yung panggastos mo sa pang-araw-araw, that is a current purpose. So, as long as it is a current purpose within within the year, ay pwede siyang i-classify as cash fund under cash. So, kung halimbawa merong cash fund na, na uh, for nagagamitin, for example, for next year for construction, na hindi naman yun, non, hindi naman yun for current purpose, for operating uh, for operating uh, purposes, hindi yun pwede i-classify as cash. Okay, under PAS 7, Philippine Accounting Standards number 7, dinefine yung cash equivalent as a short-term, highly liquid investments that are readily convertible in cash and is acquired 3 months before maturity. So, pag uh, uh, inisa-isa mo yan, cash equivalent, short-term, highly liquid, and readily convertible in cash and is acquired 3 months before maturity. So, the key term for a cash equivalent is yung date of purchase. Kung kailan siya binili, it should be 3 months before maturity. 3 months before maturity or below. So, yun ang rule sa cash equivalent. So, para, para mas maintindihan mo ano, ano ba tong mga cash equivalent na to, let's look at the examples. One is a 3-month uh, BSP Treasury Bill. Ano yung BSP? This is uh, Banko Central ng Pilipinas, the Central Bank of the Philippines. So, ano yung Treasury Bill? Itong Treasury Bill na ito ay ini-issue ng government sa iyo. For example, ikaw, gusto mong mag-invest sa government, uh, i-issuehan ka niya ng Treasury Bill Certificate. So, dapat uh, uh, 3 months lang yung uh, period ng Treasury Bill na yon. Anong ibig sabihin ng 3 months, sir? Ang ibig sabihin noon ay Within three, uh, within 3 months, hindi mo pwedeng kuhanin yung investment na yun sa, na normally, uh, yaan ay ine-effect ng mga bank, ng mga banko natin. For example, punta ka ng BDO, uh, mag, uh, uh, gusto mong mag-avail ng treasury bill, so pwede doon sa land bank. So, uh, ba, uh, there are several banks na nag offer ng treasury bills at a certain amount. So, ang sinasabi lang dito, kung ang treasury bill na nakuha mo ay 3 month PSP treasury bill, it is it can be classified as a cash equivalent. Yung 3 months ay yun yung period kung saan hindi mo pwedeng puhanin or hindi mo pwedeng i-withdraw yung amount na naka-specify dun sa treasury bill certificate mo. Another example, Ang ibig sabihin kasi ng treasury bill na yun ay may utang sa iyo ang government. Kung baga, nag-invest ka sa government and then after 3 months ay bibigyan, babalik ng government yung pera at a, with interest. So normally medyo malaki yung interest at mas secured itong mga treasury bill compared to other types of, uh, uh, of investments. So itong 3 month time deposit kung kanina merong demand deposit, current account, current deposit, savings deposit, meron ding time deposit ang mga banko. Ano naman ang tinutukoy nitong time deposit na to? Ang time deposit is magbibi magde-deposit ka na mag-open ka ng time deposit account sa mga banko and then yung yung nilagay mong pera doon ay hindi mo pwedeng i-withdraw for a agreed for for an agreed period of time. So in this case, kung 3 months daw ang time deposit ay uh, pwede siya i-classify as a cash equivalent. Next, money market instrument or commercial paper. This parang ano lang din to, treasury bill, pero ang nag-iissue ay mga private um, corporations. Next, 3 ma- uh, 
there is an error on this. Ang nakalagay kasi dyan ay 3-month treasury bill. It should be 3-year treasury bill purchased 3 months before maturity. Anong pinakaiba nito, sir, doon sa binabanggit mong 3-month BSP treasury bill kanina? Yung 3-month tre BSP treasury bill kanina, no, ang inong in-acquire mo ito ay 3 months lang talaga siya. Pero itong... Uh, Itong 3-year, uh, pakipalitan yan, hindi yan 3-month. At uh, ito, hindi ito 3-month. Uh, it should be 3-year treasury bill. Inacquire mo ay isang treasury bill na ang original period niya ay 3 years. Pero, nung inacquire mo ito, nung binili mo, ay 3 months na lang magmamature na. So, ibig sabihin, after 3 months, ay pwede mo nang makuha yung, uh, yung investment doon. So, Ang sinasabi dito, it can be classified as a cash equivalent. So, the key term na lagi mong tatandaan sa cash equivalent is it is acquired 3 months before maturity. Okay. Kaya nga ang sabi dyan, on cash equivalent, the date of purchase is, is really important in determining whether an item is to be considered as a cash equivalent. Okay. Normally, Ang, uh, ano bang sinasabi dito? The business must maintain sufficient amount of cash to fund or for use in the current operations and may ex exist, and any excess cash may must be invested in any type of revenue earning investment. So, parang ini-explain lang dito kung bakit ba itong cash ay, ay dinadala sa, sa mga short-term investments. Bakit dinadala sa mga three-time uh, uh, time deposit, three uh, three month uh, three month time deposit three month uh, treasury, BSP treasury bills bakit ba dinadala doon because hindi ka pwedeng mag-maintain ng sobrang laking cash dapat at uh, tinitingnan mo din kung paano uh, mag-grow itong mga itong mga assets na ito so yun ang explanation diyan an investment with term of 3 months okay let's go with uh, with the discussion related to uh, to this. It can be in a time deposit money market. An investment with the term of 3 months or less shall be classified as cash equivalent. So, yun nga yung sinasabi kanina. If the term daw is more than 3 months, of course, hindi na yun makaklassify as cash equivalent. Pero yun ay 1 year. Uh, yun ay current asset pa rin considered classified as a short term investment. Papaano naman if the term is more than 1 year, it is classified as a long term investment. So ganun siya. Kapag less than less than 3 months or 3 months, 3 months or less cash equivalent ang classification ng investment. If the if if it is 3 months to 1 year, it is classified as a short term is investments. Pero kung more than 1 year, classified na yon as long term investment. So how do we measure cash? Paano ba mini-measure yung cash na yan? And then, minimeasure siya at face value. Ano ibig sabihin ng face value? Uh, for example, yung 1,000 mo, ano ang ilalagay mong amount doon sa financial statement? E eh, 1,000 din. Because that is the face value of cash. Kung yung coin mo ay eh, eh, ano ba ang value nun? Uh, yung face value nun, kung ano yung nakalagay sa kanya, yun na yung kanya, yun na yung measurement sa cash. So, madali lang i-measure ang cash because meron nang naka-indicate na face value provided that it is a domestic currency. So, paano naman kapag foreign currency? So, ito yung explanation dyan. Cash in foreign currency should be translated to the Philippine peso to be measured at the current exchange rate. For example, ang financial statement ay merong cash domestic currency. Meron din cash uh, foreign currency. Dapat yung foreign currency ay i-translate into the Philippine peso. So, kung meron kang uh, meron kang dollar account ngayon, ay eh ngayon ang reporting period, therefore, i-convert mo yan into Philippine Peso at the exchange rate today. Sir, papaano kapag uh, mga deposits in foreign countries? Ang sinasabi dito ay kapag cash kasi in domestic, uh, in, in domestic currencies, walang problema, reported mo lang yun as cash in bank. Papaano kapag... Uh, uh, meron kang cash in bank pero yung banko ay nasa ibang bansa or nasa foreign country ang ang rule ay is uh, deposits in foreign countries if not subject to any foreign exchange restrictions is classified as cash 
So, matatandaan mo yung key term kanina sa cash, it must be unrestricted in use. So, kahit na nasa ibang bansa pa yon there should be no restrictions on the withdrawal of the, the funds or yung cash in bank mo sa ibang bansa. So, ang sabi dyan, kung wala daw foreign exchange restrictions, it can be classified as cash. And should be classified separately kung halimbawa naman may restrictions. For example, you cannot withdraw a certain amount because if of a foreign uh, rules or regulations, it cannot be um, it cannot be uh, classified as cash. So maybe it can be classified as uh, as investments or or other depending on the uh, nature of the the foreign restriction. Okay, another item: cash should be written down to be to to its estimated realizable value if the if the bank or financial institution holding the funds is in bankruptcy or in financial difficulty so for example yung yung cash in bank mo ay uh, for example yung cash in bank mo ay deposited in a financial in, in a bank na parang uh, there is uh, there are issues on on uh, on bankruptcy ay uh, i-written down yung cash in bank account its realizable value kasi may possibility na, na at the time hindi na ma-withdraw yung total amount of cash in bank na yun. So, may possibility, may risk associated with the bankruptcy or the financial difficulty. Okay, cash fund. Uh, ito na yung, so tapos na tayo sa cash on hand, tapos na tayo sa cash in bank. Uh, dito naman tayo ngayon sa cash fund. So, ano ba tong cash fund? It is set aside for use in current operations and classified as current asset to be part of cash and cash equivalent. Sample, petty cash fund. Yung mga pansukli or ginagamit for uh, petty expenses. So, later we will discuss that. Payroll fund, uh, yung, yung pondong sineset aside para dun sa mga per hour basis or per day basis. So, dyan kumukuha ng pampasweldo. Travel fund, interest fund, and tax fund. In, in practice, yan ay nilalagay uh, na lang sa petty cash fund. Pero, merong mga uh, business entities na gumagamit pa rin ng separate uh, fund for travel, interest, and taxes. If the fund is set aside for non-current purposes, hindi yan pwedeng i-classified as a cash fund. So, non-current asset na yun kapag ang purpose ng pagkaka-appropriate dun sa fund ay uh, non-current or more than one year. Anong example nun? Sinking fund, preference shares, and redemption share, and contingent fund. Yan yung sample niya, yung mga paboritong terminologies mo before. So, I will be ending this video muna. I will be ending to bank overdraft. On the next video, you will be seeing uh, uh, the continuation. Magkisimula doon sa bank overdraft. So, um, by this time, dapat ay na-accomplish mo na yung assignment 1 at uh, nabasa mo ang module 1 before, uh, before ka pumunta dito sa module number 2 discussion video. Thank you.